Yellowstone Super Volcano Warning, growing kill zone discovered above the new thermal hotspot. They first saw this through infrared imaging. Look at this. The trees are all gone. You can imagine how hot it is under that, that area. This is uh, the growing heat in phenomenal thermal area that stuns the geologists. Well, we know that uh, they've discovered a, a couple of new things that they've announced. They're uh, telling us that they have uh, recorded a sudden rise at the Norris Geyser Basin. That's where we have the Steamboat Geyser. Whereas we have a deformation subsidence in the Yellowstone Caldera. And we've had a recent magnitude 5 earthquake just west of the uh, new hot spot, the thermal area, and they downgraded that immediately to 4.4, even though Sizemore Berkeley still has it listed as a 4.9. Yesterday's announcement from the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles unfortunately made absolutely no reference to the magnitude 5 earthquake that they downgraded to a 4.4. They, they did not even mention the 4.4 magnitude earthquake. It was so big. Now the last time they had a 4.3 earthquake in Yellowstone, in the region of Yellowstone, was about 35 years ago and they made a big issue out of that. They were very uh, flustered, they were very uh, anxious about what it could mean and now we see that they have no mention of that whatsoever. One of my viewers commented that he knows of one of the USGS geologists that had to do with um, the group that downgraded the 5.0 magnitude of Yellowstone to 4.4. He did not agree with that to the point where he uh, got into a very heated discussion and he quit. He quit because he believed that it should have been Announced, it should have been studied, it should have been something should have been said to the public referring to this five magnitude earthquake. And we see that others still have it listed as a 4.9. Even if it was a 4.4, okay, say something about it. What does that mean? Well, maybe it's too soon. Do you think it's too soon? It happened a couple of days ago. And I was thinking that perhaps they should. Uh, come out with an announcement in the latest Caldera Chronicles, they didn't even mention the 4.4. That to me is very, dis it's a big dismay and uh, I'm, I'm very upset about the fact that one of their geologists, at least one that we know of, has resigned because of that. Because he thought it was such a, an important, a major issue, that it meant something. Okay, now I'm not fear-mongering and I'm not making this up. We're not talking about a regular volcano here. We're talking about a super volcano uh, that is two and a half times bigger than what they originally thought. And um, it can devastate a large portion of the United States. And you can't hide things like this. I mean, the more you try and hide them, the more they're just going to reveal themselves like this five magnitude Richter earthquake. So, uh, okay, they found a new, let's go on with the facts that we have here at our, our, at our hand, at hand. So they have this um, new thermal area. Uh, now there's a kill zone around that. We see that the trees have been killed. And um, this uh, was recently discovered above a new hot spot. This is by Freddie Jordan on Express UK. A worrying new kill zone hotspot the size of four football fields was just discovered in the Yellowstone supervolcano and it's been brewing for 20 years now. Scientists found the growing thermal area currently around eight acres in size by observing the quantity of dead vegetation in the area. The troubling phenomenon has been labeled a tree kill zone as the ground is warmer than its surroundings causing the trees to die off. While scientists have only just confirmed this existence, the United States Geological Survey 
estimates it's been forming for the last 20 years or so. In the new post for USGS weekly Caldera Chronicles, scientists revealed the existence of a new thermal area near Turn Lake. These areas are home to thermal features such as hot springs and geysers, of which there are more than 10,000 spanning the length and breadth of the whole of Yellowstone Park. 10,000 uh, geothermal features. As we know, the Yellowstone Supervolcano Park, the park area, has over 60% of the world's uh, geysers. Scientists noticed a growing thermal patch between the established Turn Lake Thermal Area and West Turn Lake, and the trees don't appear to survive. Uh, they, they, did not, they were not able to survive it the last few years. A look through the imagery going back to the 1990s confirmed what they suspected, that there was a growing bright patch in the middle of the forest signaling warmth beneath the surface. USGS said analysis of the Landsat 8 nighttime thermal infrared image acquired in April of 2017 revealed an unexpected warm area between West Turn Lake and the previously mapped Turn Lake thermal area. And they said this mysterious patch of bright pixels in the thermal infrared image did not match any previous mapped thermal areas. So it was a new area, something new to them. The most recent image of the Turn Lake region from 2017 reveals a large area of dead trees and bright soil, rather like a thermal area. From these satellite and aerial images, we concluded that a new thermal area has emerged in the past 20 years. But contrary to appearances, the phenomena is allegedly no cause for concern. Experts claim it's simply in line with what is expected at Yellowstone. The volcano's caldera has risen 70 centimeters in parts, according to USGS scientists, and they, speaking at a public lecture in Menlo Park, California, 2014, scientist Jacob Lowenstein revealed how the ground uh, rose from Yellowstone and how that rise is being measured. He said, quote, so the really remarkable thing about Yellowstone is that it moves up and down. The ground surface is unstable and over time it moves. Bob Smith was one of the parties that came in and resurveyed a series of roads that had not been surveyed since the 20s. Dan Zurison also worked on this topic. He's from the Cascades Volcano Observatory. Bob and his colleagues reoccupied the benches that were done previously in Yellowstone, and he made a contour map that shows the number of millimeters that the area has gone up. Most of the activity is going on in the caldera, and the uplift is about 700 millimeters at 70 centimeters, in between two areas we call the resurgent domes. So it's 700 millimeters, 70 centimeters, which is about two feet. And so that has happened in 50 years. This is a remarkable observation and something we have been tracking ever since. And we're trying to understand this, he says. And uh, they say that the growing heat is phenomenal in the area and it stuns the geologists, as we know. The uh, Yellowstone thermal, thermal area has appeared in the northern part of the, the uh, Yellowstone National Park. It's visible via Google Earth. There are more than 10,000 thermal features, as we said, which range from scorching geysers to hot springs. All of these thermal features are evidence of the intense magmatic process under Yellowstone. But the features are ever-changing, and as they heat up and cool down, the U.S. said they can move uh, even move around Yellowstone. USGS scientist Greg Vaughn said in the latest Caldera Chronicles, these sorts of changes are part of the normal life cycles of the thermal areas in Yellowstone. Recently, we've discovered another phenomenal example of thermal change, the emergence of a new thermal area which has taken place over the past 20 years. The area was just uh, was found just east of Turn Lake, another prominent thermal area in the region. Geologists observed their first inklings of the developing area in 2006, thanks to detailed satellite imagery of the park. And the satellite photos of now recognized 
thermal area taken 1994 for show an area of healthy trees growth and vegetation near Turn Lake, but by 2006, photos snapped for the National Agricultural Imagery Program revealed the first signs of tree kill zone and patches of barren vegetation appeared where the soil was heating up. The latest satellite images taken in 2017 have since shed light on the expanding area of dead trees and bring soil reminiscent of the a bright soil reminiscent of thermal areas. You can find the thermal area on Google Earth or Google Maps by punching in coordinates 44, 66, 35 north and 110, 279 west. The USGS said the 1994 air, air photos, while black and white and lower spatial resolution, clearly show that this was once an area of healthy trees with no hint of a thermal area. Other historic imagery have been analyzed indicating that this thermal area started forming in the 19, late 1990s. It's also notable that between 2006 and 17, there was an increase in the size of tree kill zone in the north side of the previously mapped Turn Lake thermal area. And geologists use the term thermal area to describe one or more thermal areas such as geysers, fumaroles, surrounded by shifting ground, gas emissions, or even heated ground. Most of Yellowstone's thermal features are clustered in just 120 thermal areas, such as the Upper Geyser Basin, Norris Geyser Basin, and Turn Lake. Many of the areas are hidden away in the more inaccessible wild parts of the park, where tourists rarely dare to venture. Because of this, scientists from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the YVO branch of USGS, have to rely on satellite images to track the changes in Yellowstone. The USGS said the recognition of new thermal area is a great example of the importance of satellite thermal infrared imaging, especially images acquired at night for mapping Yellowstone thermal areas. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.